So today we got a quick video for you, a mini PC that we're gonna be testing with gaming. This is the Geekom A5, and I'm also pairing it up with that Playnite Retrobat drive that's straight off of Amazon for a little over a hundred bucks, has a buttload of retro games, emulation, PS2, GameCube, a lot of PC games. You got some Nintendo Switch. So we're gonna test a bunch of things, uh, just straight up plug and play, get this PC going, plug in the drive, and just test some stuff. Thought it'd be kind of interesting to see how well these two items pair. They're both available on Amazon. So with the Geekom A5, we have an AMD Ryzen 5800H. It's got that Zen 3 architecture. This model, we have 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. We have a 512 gigabyte M2 SSD. We got that Vega 8 graphics. We got Bluetooth 5.2, Wi-Fi 6. And then as far as our inputs and outputs, I always think these Geekom PCs have a a decent selection here. We got two HDMIs that are 2.0 capable of 4K at 60 Hertz. If that's not good enough for you, you also have two USB-Cs that can be used for data, power, that kind of thing, charged devices, but can also be used for display at up to 8K 30 Hertz. Now, as far as our USBs, we got, or our other USBs, we got three USB 3.2s, then one USB 2.0. We got that standard audio jack, and then one of my favorite things about these mini PCs, we have an SD card reader. I just think that's a nice addition. So after this thing was all unboxed, I just made sure everything was up to date. We did test this in 3D Mark for the Night Raid score for you know PCs that have integrated graphics. If this score means anything to you, great. If it doesn't, okay. But we got a score of 17,502 for this PC. So now jumping into emulation testing. We'll talk about PC uh, gaming in a moment. Tested a couple games there. As with this Playnite Retrobat drive, you do get two different front ends. So you get Playnite, which is a PC gaming library manager, and then you get Retrobat, which has all your emulation stuff there. But starting off, I mean, we're going to be looking at stuff like from Nintendo 64 all the way up to Nintendo Switch, just real quick. Uh, no tweaks to settings or anything, just plug and play, see how things work out here. I'm not going to waste any time with the 8 and 16-bit stuff because, of course, those games will run on a system like this. But uh, just kind of jumping around, GameCube, we tested out F-Zero. Uh, it was very smooth, no issues at all. 60 FPS, pretty solid. So GameCube is definitely going to be a system that you're not gonna have a problem with on this PC. And with this build, seems like everything they've included will run very well. If you wanna watch a video, a more in-depth uh, review of this drive, I'll put a link down below in the description so you can see more of what it entails. Now, most things here played fine, but there was a few things that didn't as far as different systems. Jaguar, Atari Jaguar, I mean, if you wanna play Jaguar games, great, but uh, some of these system, or some of these games on Jaguar, they were just glitching out. Uh, they seemed like they should have played, but yeah, I was just having issues with stuff like Cybermorph, just graphics not appearing properly, stuff like that. Now, Nintendo 64, uh, I love Nintendo 64, but, you know, emulation's got to be on point for me to want to play it that way. I did test out a Stunt Racer. Excellent, excellent racing game. One of the more expensive games if you're into collecting original cartridges. Uh, but this game played very well, 60 FPS. Definitely recommend checking out Stunt Racer. Uh, Dreamcast and Naomi, no issues at all. 60 FPS, just running great. PS2 was another one. Like, yeah, it seems like most of the games are going to run fine, especially using this drive, but the system's going to be very capable. Now, with this, uh, you, you know, little Retro Bat Play Night drive, PS3, I just couldn't get games to run well. I would boot them up. And they would just stutter along, so didn't really get to test anything there. Could just require some uh, settings tweaks within the emulator, but the point here for me was like, hey, just plug and play, see what works, see what doesn't type of thing. Really, PS3 was the only thing that was like kind of disappointing 
because most everything else ran fine. Uh, Sega Saturn was, you know, same thing as everything else. 60 FPS, uh, playing some Virtual Fighter Mega Mix, excellent game, ran well. So definitely uh, Sega Saturn is going to be a, a good one here. Now jumping up to PSP. PSP, uh, I played Tekken 6, 60 FPS, no issues at all, very smooth, buttery. Uh, same thing with Wii U playing Mario Kart 8. So most of your Wii U stuff is going to run fine here. And I do notice some of these mini PCs, I, you know, I wind up having issues with Wii U. Even once like that seemed like I shouldn't, but here it just ran fine paired with this drive. And then the uh, the Forbidden Fruit Nintendo Switch, Super Mario Odyssey. It was uh, hovering around 50 to 54 FPS. I think it was running very well. A couple little stutters occasionally but very, very playable. So yeah, Nintendo Switch gonna be fine on this uh, mini PC. And then I, I just played a little bit of PC games. Resident Evil 4, I had the game running in a favor performance uh, preset mode and performance, you know, I guess it was favoring it, but it was a little bit all over the place. Mostly it ran above 30 FPS, but on occasion dipped below 30. Was it playable? Uh, that's going to be up to each individual. For me, mm, it was okay, but I would not play it this way on this PC, even with uh, you know lowering tons of settings. It's just not really worth it for me uh, to play a game like that this way. Uh, Stray, which I've never played Stray before. I know this one was popular for a minute at one point when it first came out. The game where you play as a cat. Uh, I played on medium settings and it was running slightly below 30 FPS. So I don't know what's up with that. Uh, lowering it a little bit more, you're going to get better performance. But yeah, kind of a, a mixed bag as far as PC gaming goes on this device. Definitely there's going to be a lot you could play. But retro emulation, if that's what your focus is, wanting to use like this drive, if you're trying to pair it with a, a mini PC, I think this one does okay. If you want to jump in and really tweak some settings on, on emulators, you got that option to get some better performance out of these uh, you know systems that have issues, which wasn't wasn't very many here. So there you go. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one. Bye.